Hello, everybody. This is Duke Rogelard, and you're listening to Icon Fetch. Welcome to Icon Fetch, the web's premier music interview show. Now, here's your host, Tony Peters. Welcome to Icon Fetch. I am Tony Peters. Now, Holger Peterson started Stony Plain Records 40 years ago from its kitchen table. Now, it's grown into one of the most respected independent labels in history, balancing a roster of both legendary artists like Maria Moldar, Ian Tyson, and Long John Baldry, and up-and-coming acts. Now, to celebrate, they're releasing 40 Years of Stony Plain, a three-disc set, highlighting artists on their label, plus some unreleased goodies as well. And to talk about it, we welcome back President Holger Peterson. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you, and it's a pleasure to be able to uh, talk to you uh, on this occasion of our 40th uh, anniversary. I know, I know. It, that, I mean, that's got to be mind-boggling. I mean, you, you put one of these collections together every five years, and it's just, I, I would have to imagine that, you know, you were there from the beginning, and so to be talking about something celebrating 40 years, that's got to be mind-blowing, I would think. It, uh, you know, when you stop and think about it, that's uh, certainly a long time, and it's a... Uh, kind of scary but uh you know who knows where the time goes like sandy denning said and uh um and here we are 40 years later um still you know doing pretty much the same thing um you know we're we're doing it in a different way um we've got a catalog of almost 400 releases um but i'm very proud that we're working with uh you know some of the same people we've been working with for 25 years you know yeah absolutely that says something so you know i imagine that when you assemble these collections it's got to be a labor of love. It's got to. It's got to be. I mean, you, you got to have fun putting these together and going. Okay, well, how are we going to represent? You know, the last five years and and what are we going to pick from the past and all that? Um, I mean, like, how soon do you get started on one of these? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I you know I probably start about a year ahead of time, just thinking you know about uh, what should be included. And um, when we did our thirtieth and our thirty fifth, we did uh, two CDs and one DVD that included, you know, some documentary footage and some some rare kind of uh, a DVD uh, film stuff. But nowadays, you know, with everything pretty much being on YouTube, I decided to go with uh, three CDs, and the third CD is uh, called uh, Rarities and Previously Unreleased Material. Shingle by shingle I'm patching up the roof Roll by roll Bringing in the crop so that was really fun to uh, to to go to, and to uh, to be in touch with some of the artists we work with, and ask them if they wanted to uh, donate something or had something in mind. And uh, so Duke Robillard gave us a couple of tunes. Uh, Eric Bibb did. Uh, Maria Moldar. Lay down last night, trying to play my hand. Well, through the window, I slipped a man. I didn't know no better. Uh, David Wilcox, a couple of uh, unreleased Bob Carpenters, and um, one of the records that we put out last fall was by Colin Linden, and Colin's first recordings were done in 1979 when he was a teenager. He went from Toronto down to Mississippi and then recorded in California with Sam Chapman, who was at that point in his 80s and you know had been a member of the Mississippi Sheiks uh, way back with his brothers. So, you know, for Colin Linden to uh, find those and, and give us a couple of those tracks to use, uh, you know, that really is history, and that's what really makes it a lot of fun. Well, at the same train, get my woman away. Yeah, see my train now, get my woman away. Yeah, I mean, we talk about the bonus disc for a minute. That really is kind of... Uh, I mean, you know, the the first two discs kind of highlight the label, but then this this third disc has got some interesting rarities. I mean, I, I, just an example, you've got live tracks from Maria Moldar, and I'm I'm listening to that, going, "Wow, how how were those never released? Those are really yeah. good," you know. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, I belong. 
Well, actually, that's a really good question. Uh, what happened was that uh, um, those two tracks were recorded uh, 15 years ago uh, at the Stony Plain 25th uh, anniversary party in Toronto at the Horseshoe. And we recorded an evening of Maria. And, um, you know, we were prepared to release them. We mixed the records. Uh, Maria was heavily involved. And then she came up with another really great idea for a project, and we decided to go that way. And then she came up with another idea, you know, a year or two later. <laughs> right, right, right. So it kind of, you know, it kind of, one thing leads to another, and then you're still sitting there with, uh, you know, a full album, a live album. So uh, maybe one of these days we will, but uh, right now it's nice to have a couple of those uh, tracks on sure, the live sure. album. Sure, sure. And you mentioned Duke Robillard. Uh, you've got a couple of unreleased Duke songs, and one of them I'm really surprised at. He, uh, he has his version of an Amy Winehouse song. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, well, Duke uh, turns out to be quite the fan of Amy Winehouse, and and uh, uh, that song "Rehab" is just such a great groove that uh, that you know Duke adapted to uh, kind of a jazzy feel with, of course, his always present uh, blues overtones, and um, and recorded that. Uh, we never did officially release it. We made it available as a download at one point. Uh, a digital download, but we never put it on a CD, and I kind of had that in the back of my pocket and said, well, how about now, Duke? And he said, sure, that sounds good. And then he picked out another song, which was an outtake from, uh, you know, a record we did about 20 years ago. Nice, nice. Now, um, you know, in addition to uh, got some unreleased stuff, you've also got like a little sneak peek, uh, David Wilcox. you got Uptown Bump. <laughs> That's actually something, a full length coming later in the year. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, David's uh, been working slowly, uh, you know, moving towards uh, another Stony Plain album, and uh, he's a dear friend, and this particular tune called uh, Uptown Bump is um, a real tribute to Blind Blake's guitar playing, which is a very, very difficult uh, style, but, um, you know, Canada's David Wilcox uh, has, you know, he's such a master of so many different guitar styles that... uh, uh, that was uh, that's one of the things he's working on. He sent it to me, and I said, well, can we use it? And he said, sure, I'd love to uh, see it out there. So um, I'm happy to have that one on. Right. And and on the on your 35th uh, anniversary one, I noticed that you had some Bob Carpenter tracks, and you kind of revisit that. You've got some more Bob Carpenter tracks here. But these have never seen the light of day, right? As a jewel inside you light your way and guide you There's a fool behind you who'll bind you well Satan's golden chain That's exactly right, um, and I'm really glad you picked up on that, Tony, because um, on the 35th, 5th, um, we, we put out the Bob Carpenter. Uh, he passed away, um, you know, in the early 90s, um, and Bob was uh, from the west coast lived in toronto and lived in edmonton where i'm from for quite a while and and we shared a house and uh during that time period i recorded a lot of demos with bob uh, of new songs that he had coming along uh, one way or another and um uh, for the 35th anniversary of stony plain we put uh, uh several of those songs on on that compilation and i couldn't uh, believe um, the momentum that uh, that was gathered uh from from you know having some Bob Carpenter songs because they're such quality. Uh, what happened was that uh, that we licensed the vinyl rights to a company who put it out, and we did some extensive liner notes and photos, and uh, uh, and and was picked in um, about two years ago as one of the top ten reissues of the year by Rolling Stone. So that was a real nice boost for nice. Bob Carpenter. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and there's a writer who has included um, Bob, written Bob into a couple of novels now as well. <laughs> and <laughs> um, yeah, so there's, uh, there's been some real momentum, and, and I dug a little deeper, and, uh, and we pulled out two more unreleased Bob Carpenter tunes. Nice. He really yeah, he's got a, talent. It's just an amazing voice. I mean, it just, it's just one of those that's like, wow, you know? Yeah. 
So, and and I have to I have to mention that the the last track on the bonus disc goes way way back for you. This is like <laughs> the first track you ever produced or something. Is that right? <laughs> It was. It was the very first session I produced. Um, there was uh, two songs we did uh, during that uh, that session, and um, the artist was Walter Shiki Horton, who of course is one of the legendary Chicago blues harmonica players, who played with you know Muddy Waters and uh, originally from the Memphis area, and uh, claimed also, and I don't uh, have any reason to uh, to uh, to not believe it, but he played uh, also with the Mississippi Sheiks, which is uh, you know quite a claim, but uh, uh, Walter uh, was an amazing, one of the best harmonica players ever, and he has this wonderful sweet tone. Uh, back in 1972, when I really wanted to start to produce records, uh, Willie Dixon Chicago Blues All-Stars came through Edmonton. They turned out to have like about three days off, and uh, we're staying here, and, and I was hanging out with Willie and got to know Walter Horton, and and just by coincidence had a session booked during one of those days and I asked Walter if he'd like to uh, come and partake um, on a couple of tunes. So one of those tunes uh, was a slow blues, we called it Edmonton, Shakey's Edmonton Blues. And uh, I was uh, going to England that summer and I took the masters with me because this was in early days of Edmonton recording history, there wasn't a lot, you know, studio and, and um, um, high quality, you know, opportunity to do any mixing. So I went to London, England, and and, uh, and I booked this studio uh, that the Rolling Stones used to use called Regent Studios in London. I booked it, I think, for two hours and took my little four-track in there and, and uh, mixed it. And that uh, mix hasn't been previously available, so I thought, well, this is a great time to kind of bring it all around. Sure. Uh, <laughs> from 1972 to, you know, 2016, and, and that's the very final song on the, uh, the, uh, the CD3 of Rarities. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's that's a, a good way to kind of bookend it there for sure. Sure. So, yeah. I, I want to talk about uh, some of the tracks on the first two discs, and, and what's interesting is you have a couple of these like amazing guitar uh, amalgams of like just am- amazing people all in the same room together. I mean, the the Guitar Heroes album. I had a chance to interview Albert Lee about that, and what a phenomenal concert that was with him and, and David Wilcox and Amos Garrett and, and James Burton. That had to be a thrill to be able to put that out on Stony Plain. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right, baby. That's all right, mama. Any way you do, that's all right. It really was. Uh, I was um, uh, so pleased to work with, uh, with Albert Lee and uh, James Burton and Amos and David Wilcox on that one. Um, and I was kind of involved uh, uh, from the ground up. We, we um, had them play, you know, at the Vancouver Island uh, Music Festival in 2013. Uh, Doug Cox, who is the um, um, producer of that festival, it was his vision, and I helped him pull together some of the loose ends. And we hadn't really intended uh, to uh, to do a release on it, but um, uh, after, you know, we, we made sure it was recorded and fairly well recorded, I think, quality-wise. Afterwards, um, we all kind of thought, yeah, this is definitely worth releasing, and uh, and it's a, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, James Burton, one of the great guitar players of all time, and there's just so little uh, music of him fronting bands available. Right, right, and it's and it's just great to hear him kind of trading licks with everybody else. You know, you're like, oh, okay, well that's James playing. Okay, well that's Amos playing. You know, it's just that's that's very that's it's definitely like a guitar player's dream there to have those four guys on there. So, yeah, and specifically Telecaster players. You know, right. that's the roots of, uh, of of all of their playing. And uh, um, yeah, it was it was a fantastic uh, um, you know live show, and uh, I think it really stands up as a as a as a record as well. Now, what can you tell me about the, the like the next track is is kind of along the same lines. It's the new guitar summit. That's got three other famous guitar players too, right? Yes, right. Um, New Guitar Summit uh, uh, is basically uh, Duke Robillard and one of his projects that involves Jay Giles, of course, from the Jay Giles Band, and Jerry Bowden. Uh, The three of them have had this little side project uh, where they play a lot of uh, swing jazz 
uh, a lot of uh, uh, wonderful stuff. Uh, and in this case, uh, we've included a version of Flying Home, uh, which is a Benny Goodman, Lionel Hampton tune. Uh, we've done two records with this group now, and they occasionally go out and, and perform live. It's a real special thing because, of course, you know, Jay Giles is known for his, uh, you know, rock and blues kind of uh, approach, and, and the Jay Giles band's many hits. So for Jay Giles to, uh, to, to do, you know, swing jazz with Duke Robillard and, and Jerry Bowden is a pretty special occasion. And, you know, this is just kind of, you know, Duke does so many of these wonderful projects. He's so eclectic. I'm so proud in our catalog that we have two uh, Duke Robillard Herb Ellis records as well. They're just amongst the best uh, guitar swing records I think you've ever heard. Nice. And, and you know, that's kind of a, a recurring theme with Stony Plain is allowing artists that may be known for something else to kind of have a, a you know, kind of show a completely different side and I mean none can be further from that than, than talking about Jeff Healy it was the same oh, kind yeah. of deal oh I need someone to love me need somebody to carry me home to San Francisco and bury my body there you know and, and you include um, Hong Kong blues from him uh, that was, I think, on the, the last record that he did before he passed away. And, I mean, he was, a lot of people only know him as a blues rock guitar guy, and there was so much more to Jeff than that. Absolutely. Um, and I was so proud to, uh, to work with Jeff Healy during the last several years of his life and to, uh, to be there when he, uh, you know, wanted to do that kind of music and to encourage him and support him and you know, the first record we did together that way was a live record with uh, Chris Barber, the legendary British um, band leader, um, playing with Jeff Healy and the Jazz Wizards. And every time I saw Jeff in that band, there was just so much joy in it. You know, it, it, you just could not deny how much fun everybody was having, the musicians on stage, and, and how that translated, you know, into the audience as well. Um, Jeff unfortunately passed away, and, and uh, we posthumously released a record uh, called Last Call in 2010. And it was a record that, uh, that Jeff um, had been working on, and it's all solo or uh, duo um, recordings. And in some cases, Jeff would uh, overdub a couple of guitar parts or, or his uh, trumpet playing as well. He was a really good trumpet player. Um, and, uh, you know, Jeff at that point really had decided he didn't want to do any more rock and blues records. Well, subsequently, we did uh, two more with Jeff, um, but we also uh, then went back, released his jazz records, and I think we did uh, four Jeff Healy uh, jazz records altogether. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I want to touch on a couple of other artists on this collection. Ronnie Earl is mostly known as an instrumental guy. I mean, he's put out a, a bunch of records on Stony Plain, and and, it, and they really showcase his great guitar playing. But it was interesting that you happened to choose a song with vocals on it. Well, so play a line with pretty baby. Tomorrow you could be crying. Hey! Yeah, well, I actually went to Ronnie uh, and said, um, you know, what do you think? What would you like to see on there? And uh, so... Ronnie suggested that, and the vocalist is uh, Michael Ledbetter, who did an amazing job. And I think another reason that Ronnie felt this would work uh, is because the song uh, It Takes Time was written by Otis Rush. And Ronnie absolutely loves Otis Rush, and in fact, you know, was invited to appear at the Chicago Blues Festival in tribute to Otis Rush this year. So I think Otis Rush was on his mind, and this was just another way for him to uh, pay tribute to his old friend. Right, absolutely. Now, I, I kind of wonder how you decide. It's it's probably difficult to decide which track to pull from each artist. Uh, I mean, Monkey Junk just put out a record late last year, and uh, but you actually pull from 2011 for the song that you represent them by. It's the same old story. From the wall into the back. Yes, that's right. Uh, once once it starts kind of falling together like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, there's certain things that uh, that work together, and there's a certain flow. In the case of Monkey Junk, um, they're also very close to Paul Reddick, who is uh, one of our, our later signings, newer signings. And uh, Steve Mariner from Monkey Junk um, records with Paul Reddick. So, you know, we put a Paul Reddick song on there, and then I think for the flow part of it, um, uh, you know, Mother's Crying is, is, is 
you know, one of the most successful tunes that, that uh, Monkey Junk has done. It got a lot of attention, so it, it just kind of made sense, I think, from uh, my end to, to include that song. Sure, yeah, and it's, it's a good listening experience kind of thing. So, you know, Maria Moldar kind of plays heavily on a, on a couple of the tracks, um, you know, not only on her great duet with Taj Mahal, Soul of a Man. Won't somebody tell me answer if you can somebody tell me just what is the soul of a man which uh i believe got a grammy nomination uh, as well exactly right uh, right right got three grammy nominations with uh with maria's records that we've done over the years nice nice and then also um she was the producer on the memphis mini tribute too right so you got to use good judgment and keep your big mouth closed Yes, yeah. Uh, I love working with Maria. She's been uh, she's been a friend since the early '80s, and and we've been kind of her fallback record label for all the roots music uh, and uh, cool projects that she loves to do. Um, and at the same time, you know, she's uh, she's uh, able to do a more commercial projects with bigger budgets for other people. Uh, so it's um, uh, it's wonderful to uh, to to work that way with Maria. And, uh, you know, uh, she, to my mind, is kind of like the queen of roots music, really. You know, when you look back at the uh, Jim Kweskin Jug Band and the Jeff and the Maria Maldar records and, and uh, you know, her early Warner recordings, uh, Waitress in a Donut Shop, which includes everybody from uh, Doc Watson to, you know, big bands uh, with Benny Carter. Uh, she just really has covered all kinds of roots music. She's so knowledgeable and she's so passionate about what she does and she's such an amazing talent that, you know, I'm so proud that we've done uh, so many projects over the years. Right, right. Yeah, and she just continues to to make great music. So, you know, kind of looking, you know, hoping that we've got a new record on in the future from her, too. Yes, we've got a couple of ideas we've been uh, talking about, so I hope so, too. Good, good. You know, in the liner notes, you mentioned that there would be no Stony Plain without Ian Tyson. Down where the clear waters flow. What do you mean by that? Yeah, um... Well, when we started Stony Plain Records, and I'm saying uh, Alvin Johns, my partner, and I, um, we started it, um, um, you know, the first record came out 40 years ago in 1976, and uh, the first few records we did were, were um, you know, it, yeah, I think in the first four years we maybe put out five or six records, and then started licensing and, and this and that, but when Ian Tyson um, moved out to Alberta from Toronto after having a couple of very successful careers, uh, he decided to do a record called Cowboyography, and uh, we had got to know each other over time, and, and I had made it clear that I'd love to work with him. So Cowboyography came out in 1986 and uh, had some major country hits in Canada. Uh, it won all kinds of awards, including a couple of Juno Awards and uh, many CCM, the Canadian Country Music Association Awards, and really kick-started Ian's career. Uh, all over again, I think for the third time. Uh, and uh, that record eventually went gold in Canada and then eventually went platinum in Canada. It's still one of our, our best-selling catalog items. Uh, so it was that time, you know, after kind of being a fledgling label, well, we still are, I guess, but after 10 <laughs> right. years of, of being kind of a kitchen table label, um, all of a sudden, you know, we had a gold record and, nice. and, uh, and we had a pass and... Uh, uh, and it was Ian Tyson that uh, that was gracious enough to uh, to do that and open those doors for us. Nice. Now I want to bring up one more thing about the liner notes in there. Uh, of all people, you got a nice high praise from Jerry Wexler from Atlantic <laughs> Records. How cool is that? <laughs> no kidding. And uh, you know that was one one of the connections that I have a couple of old friends to thank for. Uh, Doug Somm, uh who you know spent a couple of years in Canada and staying with me quite often and. We put together a band, uh, the Amos Garrett, Doug Somm, Gene Taylor Band. Uh, we did an album that won a Juno Award in Canada, and uh, they uh, toured together playing uh, all kinds of festivals and going up into the Yukon, which Doug had always wanted to do. And uh, Doug was, uh, was, was a major character, and we even did a tour of Japan with the Amos Garrett, Doug Somm, Gene Taylor Band, and did a live record in Japan. 
Uh, and Doug was the kind of person who would, he knew so many different people, and, and uh, he'd get Jerry Wexler on the phone, and he'd say, oh, hey, say hello to Jerry Wexler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so all of a sudden, you know, wow, you know, here I am talking to Jerry Wexler. And another friend of Jerry's was Maria Maldar, who um, was an old, old friend. And and uh, and when we sent um, uh, Maria's... Uh, uh, you know, record at the time uh, to to Jerry. Um, he just was full of praises, and um, and he loved uh, the, this duet that uh, that Maria and Bonnie Raitt had done together, and that was from the uh, Richland Woman Blues record in two thousand and one. So uh, we were getting to, to uh, you know getting to the point of putting out a, a, an anniversary compilation, and and Richard Flohill uh, asked Jerry Wexler if if he'd like to do a little blurb and. Not only did he do that, but he did, you know, um, a, a quite an extensive, um, you know, support uh, lending story on CK on on, uh, on Stony Plain Records, and it was just so. I mean, it was one of the nicest things that's ever happened to me to get, you know, that from Jerry Wexler and sure. and to know that he was in our corner. So that that just meant the world. Sure, absolutely. That's I mean, you know, talk about a guy that, you know. Helped build one of the all-time great record labels. You know that's that's fantastic. So, um, you know, I, I want to talk about one more thing. It's interesting. Um, I saw a YouTube video that gave a tour of Stony Plain Records, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> and and what I think is neat is as the cameras going around, you are just surrounded by stuff. You've got CDs, <laughs> you got albums, you've got you know uh, autographed harmonicas, you've got books, you got everything. You know, I mean, it's it's really cool. But what's interesting is, I mean, I think for a while technology was it was all about, OK, we're going to get rid of all the physical stuff. And yet you guys are kind of like, you know, totally the opposite of that. You guys are still supporting. I mean, you're, you're offering things digitally, too. I know. But as far as the, you know, the physical products that you guys are still putting out. And are you seeing kind of a, a swing back a little bit towards that kind of thing where, where people are starting to value the physical a little more? I think so, yeah. Um, and it's something that's, uh, that's kind of, you know, kept us grounded all the years, you know, being record collectors and that sort of thing from day one. Um, and uh, uh, just, you know, having that respect for for the music and the memorabilia and all those little things. Um uh, but uh, yeah, last year we released uh, I think four uh, vinyl albums, and uh, um, and you know there definitely is a swing back. Um, it's not the big swing that that so many people uh, I think talk about about vinyl being some kind of savior or something. It's uh, you know most of the vinyl in our kind of world, you know, the roots music world, gets sold in small independent record stores. There's not a lot of those, and now there's so much of that vinyl reissued that a lot of these stores don't have the budget to bring in a lot. So uh, if they do, you know, bring in, it might be one copy or something. So it's, uh, it's, it's always still a challenge, but it's so gratifying to see that that you know, is still happening and and uh, that there's more and more reissues of great music. Right. Now, you're celebrating 40 years. Uh, do you have other things planned for this celebration? Yes, uh, Tony, we've got uh, new releases coming along. Um, we've just put out a new Kenny Blues Boss Wayne record um, that uh, that has Duke Roblard on it. It's kind of a, um, a Louis Jordan uh, kind of a, you know, era swing uh, approach. Uh, Amos Milborn, you know, that kind of joyous uh, swing sound. And uh, Paul Reddick from Toronto, that's a new release. He's a great harmonica player um, who uh, is also uh, regarded as somewhat of a blues poet. Uh, we also, we have coming uh, in September a uh, new Duke Robillard. There'll be a new uh, Ronnie Earl, a uh, new Rory Block as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, we just continue on. Uh, you know, I'm so proud to be working with all those artists I mentioned, and in many cases, the the relationships are so long, and that's what uh, what I'm especially proud of is that you know to be working with uh, somebody like an Ian Tyson, you know, since the mid '80s, or Maria Moldar since that time, or Duke Robillard since 1992. Um, those relationships are just incredibly rewarding, and um, and I'm very proud to uh, to release those records and work with those artists. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that probably says, you know, you hear a lot of the doom and gloom about the record industry, but, you know, with you guys forming these personal relationships with these artists, and you give them the freedom to kind of do what they want, um, 
you know, that's probably one of the reasons why you guys are still standing and other people aren't. So, <laughs> Yeah, well, thanks. Um, and, and the other thing, of course, that goes with that is keeping the label small so that, uh, um, you know, I do have a chance to work directly with the artists. Um, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's very rewarding. Uh, we, we probably release, you know, about eight records a year, uh, and we don't really want to release more, um, and we only sign maybe one or two artists a year because we just don't have um, room, you know, right. to, uh, on our plate to do more than that. Right, right. Well, I mean, it, it's it's a formula that you guys have been doing for quite a while, and it and there's no point in uh, in changing it now. So, well, congratulations on the on the 40 years of Stony Plain. And I think if if people want more uh, information about it, you guys have got uh, StonyPlainRecords.com is a good place to go. Exactly, yeah. S T O N Y P L A I N. A bit of a different uh, spelling. It's our, our geographic location on the edge of the prairies. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So that's that's where the name kind of comes from, uh, Stony Plain Records. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, we, you know, please check out our site if uh, if you're looking for anything, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to uh, to help. Good, fantastic. All right, Holger. Well, it was good talking to you, and uh, good luck. And we hope to talk to you in another five years for the 45th anniversary. All right, Tony. It's a date. Let's do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for all your help. We really appreciate it. Holger Peterson there, still plugging away with Stony Plain Records, the independent record label for 40 years now. And uh, the new collection that they have out is an excellent introduction to just how diverse that record label really is. So I'm Tony Peters. Until next time, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. You've been listening to Icon Fetch with Tony Peters. Want more great interviews? Head over to IconFetch.com. There, you'll find every interview we've ever done, plus CD reviews, This Day in Music, and a random album of the day. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Who is Tony going to interview next? It could be you. Send what you've got to Tony Peters. Icon Fetch, P.O. Box 292134, Dayton, Ohio. 45429 or email Tony at host at iconfetch.com. Until next time, this is Joe Kelly. Have a great day.